Dr. Ferdinand Weke was the medical director of the Medical Center, Federal Polytechnic, Bauchi, Nigeria. He left this position into private practice as a medical director of Sabo Medical Clinic. He combined his medical duties with active ministry until 2003 when he went into full-time Christian service. He is presently the director of Truth Institute and coordinator of Eternity Ministries. He is a teacher of God's Word with a passion to help men live their lives for that which would matter most at the end of time. His, his father's donkeys got lost and as a responsible son, he went to for donkeys. But this guy can't do for his brother. Please make welcome Dr. Ferdinand Wiki. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Please, you may be seated. Thank you, sir and ma. Hallelujah. I would like to welcome you to this evening, and I want to thank you for coming, despite the night vigil that uh, we finished somewhere early this morning. Praise the Lord. Um, I'd like us to pray and get straight into the Word of God. We have a few things that we'll be looking at. But don't forget that we are focusing on the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We just want to bless and praise you for who you are. We want to thank you that we are citizens of your kingdom. We want to thank you that we belong to you. We want to thank you that your word cannot return to you void. We want to thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We want to praise you and want to glorify you. We want to thank you that you are our Father. You are actually our Father. And for this, we are very grateful. And we are asking tonight that you will reveal yourself to us so that we will pray with understanding. You said, God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. It means that when we bring our praise or when we bring our prayer, we must pray it with a revelation of who you are. Father, grant that to us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ so that you will become big in our eyes and the mountains and the matters of life, they will become small. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you listened while uh, we were praying, and I recommend that you listen when you pray. Oftentimes, when you pray, you say things that are coming from your spirit that you didn't plan for. You didn't set out to say those things. But the Spirit of God speaks through you um, even without your knowing. You don't, a, a child of God who is walking in the Spirit doesn't have to say, Thus says the Lord to prophesy. Some of the things you speak, they are prophetic without your deliberately trying to uh, ginger up prophecy. The reason is because the spirit of prophecy lives inside you as a child of God. You will notice that we quoted a scripture in Psalm 47. Can we just read that as um, we make some progress at this time? Psalm 47, and please look at verse um, 6 and 7. It says, Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Why? Look at the next verse. He said, because God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises, how? With understanding. Sing ye praises with understanding. What that scripture is saying is that if you are going to bring praise and worship that is acceptable to God, it will have to issue out of and understanding out of revelation genuine worship is born from revelation jesus said to the samaritan woman you worship something that you don't know you don't have a revelation of the person that you are worshiping and when we pray our prayers with an understanding of the person that we are talking to when we pray prayer with a revelation of the person that we are talking to, it changes everything. 
the bigger God gets in your eyes, the tinier your mountains will become. The bigger God gets in your eyes, the tinier your mountains will become. Goliath looks very big to those that have not seen Jehovah. I said, Goliath, he looks very big and very intimidating to those that have no revelation of Jehovah. The same Goliath that harassed and troubled everybody. When David showed up, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should, he should defy the armies of the living God? I pray that you will pray your prayers with understanding. You will pray your prayers with a revelation of the God that you are talking to. And actually, uh, the things I will be sharing with us this evening, I pray that they will help us in that direction. Because I want us to get a revelation of who he is. You know, we said, thine is the kingdom. Scripture said, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Now, before we get to quickly concentrate on that, remember that our case is different. We don't pray like the hypocrites. We do not pray like the hidden. The hypocrites are acting drama. The hypocrites, they have an agenda that is different from the glory of God and from the purpose of God. The hidden, they are praying in darkness. And they think, they think that they will be answered. Their prayers will be heard for some reasons that have no biblical foundation. But we have a covenant. We pray out of a conviction, out of a revelation of who God is and what he has done for us. Let me show you a scripture in Isaiah chapter 8 very quickly as we make some progress. Isaiah chapter 8 and please look at verse 9. Can you help me to put up that scripture? Please, my brother, thank you. Isaiah chapter 8 and from verse 9. The, no, put it in the King James. Uh, I think people are more familiar with it in that King James. Associate yourselves together, O ye people, and then what is going to happen to you? You shall be broken in pieces. And give ear, all ye of far countries, and what will happen to you? Get yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Get yourselves, and you shall be broken in pieces. Yes? Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, because God is with us. Please note the word for. The word for means the reason that all of these things will be like that is because God is with us. Now, literally in the Hebrew, that God is with us is not like it is written here. If you open, if you check any of your Bible study software, you will notice that God with us there is actually a word, and the word is Emmanuel. So it has been translated into English. That is why you have it, because God is with us. So if you are to read it as it is, it will say, because of Emmanuel. Now please, go back to verse, verse, uh, verse, verse 9. Associate yourselves together, O ye people. And what is going to happen to you? You shall be broken in pieces. Why? Because of Emmanuel. Give ear, all of you of our countries. Get yourselves and you shall be broken in pieces. Arrange your plan to attack. You will be broken in pieces. Get yourselves. You will be broken in pieces. Next verse. Take your counsel together against the people of God and it shall come to nothing. Speak the word, it will not stand. Why will all of these plans and all of these agendas, why will they not prosper? He says, it's because of Emmanuel. Because we have an Emmanuel in the house. Emmanuel is on our side. Our case is different. Now please put the next verse. I'm not done with that passage. Put verse 11. Aha. For the Lord spake thus to me, please, just pay attention to this now. He said, the Lord spake to us to me with a strong hand and he instructed me uh, that I should not walk in the way of these people. Saying, God said, look, don't walk in the way of these people. And he spoke to me with a strong hand. The message translation said, he grabbed me with both hands and he shook me, he shook me. And then he said to me, 
Don't walk in the way of these people. Ah, thank you very much. Put it in the message. Thank you. God spoke to me strongly. He grabbed me with both hands and he warned me not to go along with these people. And what did God say? Please, the next verse now. Don't be like these people. Always afraid that somebody is plotting against them. Do you know that this is where today's church is? Most believers have a siege mentality. Somebody is about to destroy you. There is an enemy who is about to swallow you. Hey, hey, what am I going to do now? Somebody will prescribe 21 days prayer and fasting. Then you do something. Hoping that because of what you are doing now, the, the plans of the enemy will not work. You didn't read verses 9 and 10. He said the reason all of those plans are not going to work is because of Emmanuel. And listen sir, when Isaiah wrote this thing, it was a prophecy. In our time, it is no longer a prophecy, it's a reality. Give God praise in the house. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you now? This Emmanuel that Isaiah was prophesying about is no longer a prophecy. One day Emmanuel said to them, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This thing that you have been reading about is happening here now. That's why the prophets, they were wondering which kind of people are going to inherit these promises. The Bible says the prophets that preached about this thing, they were searching and wondering, say, well, what manner of people are going to be the heirs of this promise? Eh? Please, put that scripture back. He said, no, no, go back to verse 11 where we were. The Lord spoke to us to me with a strong hand and he instructed me that I should not walk in the way of these people, saying, yes, do not say a conspiracy concerning all that these people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Please put it in the Amplified Translation. I want to show you something. If I can convince you that your case is different, your prayers will be different. Your attitude when you pray will be very different. There will be an assurance inside your spirit that is not born out of guesswork. You will not be praying. Look, you know when they say fire conference, some of you think that fire comes by shouting, fire, 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 fire. You are joking. Psalm 39, the Bible said, as I meditated, the fire burned. Put Psalm 39 verse 3. Then we go back to Isaiah. Fire doesn't make a lot of noise. Eh? He said, my heart was hot within me while I was musing, as I meditated. That's the word muse there. The fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. There's a fire that, Jeremiah's fire was not shouting outside. He said, his word, his word was like what? Fire shot up inside my bones. But what was it that was the fire? He said it was his word. So don't, don't, don't you see, when you are talking fire, 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 be asking yourself, which, what, what does God say about fire? Not what are people shouting about fire. Please, go back to Isaiah chapter 8 and put it up in the Amplified Translation. I think we are at verse 11 or 12 now. Verse 11, 12. 12. So the Lord instructed me not to follow these people. Now, follow the matter here. I said, do not call conspiracy or hard or holy all that these people will call conspiracy or hard or holy. Neither be in fear of what they fear. Do you know that the average Christian today is afraid of what unbelievers are afraid of? But God said, don't fear what they fear. Don't say conspiracy when they say conspiracy. Don't call it what they call it. Do you understand what I said when, when I said, don't call it what they call it? Excuse me, please. When they say impossible, somebody that has Emmanuel, are you supposed to say impossible? Why will you not say impossible? Because your case is different. They should say impossible. They are supposed to say that because they don't have Emmanuel on their side. When they say hopeless, should people that have Emmanuel as their heritage, should they also repeat the same hopeless that people are saying? 
God said, don't call it what they call it. Don't say hopeless when they say hopeless. Don't say, don't say conspiracy. Don't say hey, disaster when they are shouting disaster. And don't say impossible. Don't say incurable when they say incurable. Excuse me, somebody that has a manual, the great physician, should he be saying incurable when everybody is saying incurable? His case is different. So prayer does not begin with prayer. It begins with a revelation of who you are, your relationship with the person to whom you are praying. The ground on which you are standing to pray. Please put up that scripture again. He said, don't, 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 and don't make others afraid or in dread. Verse 13. Don't fear what they fear. I'm going to tell you what you have to fear. Verse 13. The Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Regard him as holy. And honor his holy name. By regarding him as your only hope of safety. And let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. Let your concern be him. Lest you offend him. Be, let him be your fear. Let God be the big fear inside your heart. Not the fear of death. Not the fear of not getting something. Not the fear of somebody killing you. Not the fear of something else. But let Jehovah be your fear inside your heart. And what is the consequence in verse 14? He said, and he shall be for a sanctuary. He will be for a sanctuary. Jehovah will be. Now, listen. Look, 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 look up at the board. Look up at the board. He shall be a sanctuary. A sacred and indestructible asylum. Have you ever heard of people who are looking for asylum? Why are they running? They are running into a place seeking asylum. Asylum means a place you run into and you are safe. He said, if you will stop fearing what they fear and concentrate on fearing Jehovah and you sanctify him in your heart, you put his name as holy. This is the same scripture in Matthew chapter 6 that Jesus taught. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what is going to happen now? He said, everything else will be... That's what he's saying here. He said, don't be afraid of what they're afraid of. Look, many of the prayers we are praying, they are, not, they are born of fear. You hear a cat running around in your company in the night and making meow, meow around 1 a.m. Then you wake up and start shouting. Fire! You see a wall gecko in your house. Can't you see that you are, you are in bondage? You can't even sleep in the night. Because if, if you don't pray very well, you know, if, if you don't deal with these people in the night, you, you look, they will come after you. Are you inside this sacred and indestructible asylum? Are you located inside him? He shall be for a sanctuary, a sacred and indestructible asylum to those who reverently fear and trust in him. But he shall be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the rest of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Born again child of God, when you set yourself to pray, remember that your case is different. Remember that you are praying from a different platform. And it is not a platform of merit. It's a platform that is secured by the finished work of Emmanuel. Somebody give him praise in the house. Hallelujah. Because of Emmanuel. Why will the plans of the enemy concerning your life not come to pass? It's because Emmanuel came and did something for you. And having spoiled principalities and powers, hallelujah, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them by the cross. That is why the enemy will not prosper over your life. It's not because you fasted. Is it wrong to fast? No, there's nothing wrong with fasting. We fast, but we don't quote our fasting. In fact, the purpose of your fasting should be to help you see Emmanuel very well. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. A sacred and indestructible asylum. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they do what? They run into it. And then they are safe. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So, let's now go back to Matthew chapter 6 and concentrate on the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You remember that in that Matthew chapter 6 that we have been studying, you will find our priorities in prayer. Do you remember that? 
you can see our priorities. The first thing that we are praying about or crying about is not something to eat or something to drink. Hallowed be your name. Our Father, who art in heaven. We are a community. Hallowed be your name. Let your name be exalted. Your name, your name is what is important. My name is secondary. Many of us, do you know part of why the body of Christ has not made progress? Every denomination, everybody is concerned about their name. If they can't put their name to something and own it, they will not support it. Even if it is born of God. They have to start their own. They have to start their own. Notice now that every church denomination is starting their own university. Because you have to have your name to something, whether it is viable or not. But those that are praying this prayer, we know that our names are... Look, look, let me say something to you. I, I don't care whether... I don't need to appear on any billboard in this town or anywhere else in Nigeria. It's not necessary. You don't need to know me. You need to know Emmanuel. My job, actually, if I'm a thorough minister of the gospel, will be to point you to Emmanuel. We, but Paul said, we don't preach ourselves. There's only one name that, excuse me please, your name cannot help anybody. My name can't cast out an ant. I hear Christians these days, they say, you know, when the devil came and this attack came and I stood and I called upon the God of Bishop something, something, something. Have you heard that kind of testimony before? I'm afraid for you. I don't know where you learned what you are doing. Who, who, who told you that your bishop who is still a jambite? He has not graduated from this Christian race. That is approved in heaven for you to be quoting his name. The man's name is still in pencil. You don't know he's still running his race? The God, and you are joining his name to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Who authorized you to do that? And why don't you talk about your God for yourself? Since you have a relationship with him and he's your father. Listen, some of the things I'm saying are not popular. I know. But the plan is not to be popular. That's not the plan. Jesus didn't call us to be popular. Hallowed be your name. Your name. Ha! Your name. Your name. That is why when his name is at stake, you will take a stand. And you will say to yourself, if I perish, I perish. Because that name has eternal life inside. It is the name that is above every name. The name at which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. These are our priorities in prayer. The first thing to do when we are praying according to the pattern that the master taught us is not give me this, give me that. You heard the man that was saying give me, give me, give me yesterday. What was his name? Mr. Ago. He said give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me food that is sufficient for me. Lest I, look at the quantity of me and me and I in two verses of his prayer. It's okay. His prayer is a good prayer. He was praying for, for himself. <laughs> but in the New Testament, our priority is bigger than ourselves. And that largeness of heart is what is going to attract enlargement of territory. Ha! I just said something you need to pay attention to. It is largeness of heart that attracts enlargement of territory. Do you remember Jabez? The Bible said Jabez prayed and he called on the God of Israel. And he said, oh, that you will bless me indeed. That you will enlarge my territory. Look, before Jabez could pray for an enlargement of territory, there was an enlargement of his heart. There was an enlargement of his capacity. This man suddenly discovered that there is a God in Israel. There's a God in Israel. I am a covenant man. I don't have to carry this load that my father and my mother put on me when I was born. 
I don't have to live under these circumstances when there is a God in Israel. Do you know that the God that Jabez called upon was not the God of Jabez? And Jabez called on the God of Israel. And he said, oh, that you will bless me indeed. So the God that Jabez called upon was available to everybody. Why didn't everybody get what Jabez got? Because they never came to a largeness of heart where they could make the same kind of request. If you enlarge the territory of a man that has a small heart, the territory will shrink back to the size of the man. If you take a secondary school graduate, somebody who just finished secondary school, and you make him minister for health, the federal ministry of health will shrink to his size. God forbid that. Because that is his capacity. Some of the favor that people are praying for, arbitrary favor, Favor, favor. Oh, favor. You will overtake everybody. You are the next Joseph. Potiphar will bow before you in the name of Jesus. You need more than prayer. There has to be an enlargement of your capacity. So that when God puts you where he's going to put you, you will be able to sustain it. Joseph was not a fluke. Joseph was trained. Joseph performed. Joseph was loaded. By the time Joseph came before Pharaoh, imagine that favor brought Joseph before Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh told Joseph the dream. And when, when Joseph finished, when Pharaoh finished talking, Joseph scratched his head. He said, your majesty, I'm used to interpreting dreams, so, but I've not heard this type before. <laughs> what would have happened? They would have sent him back to the prison. That is if Pharaoh doesn't cut off his head. Pharaoh that can kill somebody on his birthday, you need to be careful <laughs> when you are coming before Pharaoh. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is an enlargement of our hearts. Jabez's heart was enlarged. He saw possibilities. Ah, when we begin to pray the way Jesus taught us to pray, and we say, Our Father, we are seeing beyond ourselves. We are seeing beyond our little congregation. We are seeing the body of Christ. We are seeing the uttermost ends of the earth. When we say, Give us, we are seeing beyond our need. That is why God will trust you with abundance. Because your heart is large. Your circle of concern is wide. You are not just thinking about yourself. You are thinking about the purposes of God. I'm going to talk about this more tomorrow in the morning during the church service. When I show you that God provides platforms for people to serve him. And one of those platforms is the platform for kingdom treasurers. Whose job it will be to multiply resources to advance the purpose of God. But their heart will not be small. These are our priorities when we pray. And the rest of the things will be added to us as the master taught us. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. And let me also say that when we say thy kingdom come in that prayer, I want to ask a question. The territory where we are asking that this kingdom will come, is it vacant? Remember that the Bible says that the devil is the prince of this world. Do you remember something like that? But Paul said, if our gospel is hidden, it is hidden to those who are perishing. In whom the God of this world has done what? Has blinded the minds of those that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in unto them. So there is somebody in the Bible calls the God of this world. Now, so there is a God of this world. There is a prince of this world. And while his government is in place... Jesus now says we should pray. What is the prayer point? Let another kingdom come. So what is that in brief? It is a declaration of war. Because when you have a kingdom in place that is not planning to resign and you are inviting another kingdom, <laughs> that is a declaration of war. So you see, that prayer that we have been praying normally is a battle cry. Once you say your kingdom come, ah, there will be a clash of kingdoms. And that is what is going on in the world today. A clash. When you get to that office and you say, Father, let your kingdom come here, that is when all hell will break loose on your head. When you want to do the will of God in that territory, ah, because the devil knows that, knows that a carrier of the life of God has arrived in that place. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
So we have the prayer there and he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what that means is that heaven is our reference point. Hallelujah. We have a reference point. We have a reference point for our values, for our choices, for our decisions. And it is, it is not America. It is not Europe. It is heaven. As in heaven, so on earth. As in heaven. That's actually how he says it literally. It's not, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The literal version says, your will be done as in heaven, so on earth. That is how the words are organized and arranged in that scripture. So, we must always be asking ourselves, what is going on in heaven? You see, that's why we, we fellowship with heaven. Hallelujah. We report to headquarters. We come before the throne of grace so that we hear the heart of our Father. We are partners with heaven. We are co-laborers. Jesus said, as I hear, so I judge. He said, the son can do nothing of his own self. Do you remember a scripture like that? He said, but that which he sees the father doing, that is what he does likewise. That's what we are supposed to do with our lives. What we see the father doing. Now, if you now look at verse 13, it says, and do not lead us into temptation, but do what? Deliver us from evil or from the evil one. Now, look at the next word. What's the next word there? What's the next word there in verse 14? For. Eh? Some versions put it in the same verse 13. Some put it as verse 14. But the important thing is that it's there. For. Because. Yours is the kingdom. Now, you know the little word. It, it, when you are reading your Bible, pay attention to little words. They are the key to finding revelation from scripture. Four. So all of this prayer that we are praying, why are we praying it to the person to whom we are praying it? I need, I need help from you. Help me to preach. These prayers that we are praying, why are we praying it to the person to whom we are praying it? Because His is the kingdom. His is the power. The power that can attend to what we are praying about is with Him. I, I, I don't want you to miss this point. That's why God was talking about people that pray to a God that cannot save. Why are we asking you that your name should be hallowed? Because the kingdom belongs to you. Why are we saying that your kingdom should come? Because it is your kingdom. Your will is supposed to be done in your kingdom. Not any other person's will. Since you are the owner of the kingdom... There is no other will that you... Excuse me, please. Whose will is done in your house? Is it the will of your neighbor down the road? <laughs> so since he's the owner of the kingdom, hallelujah, let his will be done in his kingdom. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among all the nations. Psalm 22 and verse 27 and 28. All the ends of the earth shall see and shall come and bow down. He said, because the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. That is why we pray to him. Because he has power to handle the matters that we are praying about. There is nothing we are praying about that is above him, that is bigger than him. Hallelujah. The glory that we are looking for in life, he is the one that distributes it. He is the possessor of all glory and of all honor. For thine, that's the next word in that prayer, thine, thine, yours, thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory. The word thine is indicative of possession. Ownership. Come on, does this make sense, people of God? The word thine means ownership. And let me say something to you. Divine ownership is the righteous foundation of all of God's dealings with his creatures. Divine ownership 
is the righteous foundation of all of God's dealings with his creatures. See, if God doesn't own it, he has no right to say anything about it. I said, if God is not the owner, excuse me, do you have a right? Do you remember the man that was uh, that hired laborers and when the time reached, he paid all of them the same amount? Do you remember that story? When the other people complained, what did the man say to them? He said, what is your trouble? Don't I have a right to do what I like with what belongs to me? Uh -uh. What's your problem? Is your eye evil because I am generous? Can't I do what I like with my, with my own money? That is ownership. I want you to pay attention. You know, it looks small, but I want you to understand that the entire principle, I believe, this is not says for a I There are certain things that you may not read exactly like that in the Bible. When I want to say my opinion about them, I say, thus says for a Ferdinand. So at least you can, you can accommodate that this is what I think. I will say, thus says the Lord. <laughs> Do you know that I believe that the most important verse in the Bible is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. That is why the devil and all the evolutionists, that's why they hate that verse. They hate it. You don't know that, do you know that if God didn't create everything, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is the foundation for redemption. The only reason that there is anything and anybody to save was because God created everybody. The reason that God could intervene, was because if he created everybody, then he owns it all. If he owns it all, then he can answer prayer. He can do what he likes with his creation. And I think that God wrote it like that, so that if you just opened the book, and you read verse 1, and then you closed it, you got the message. <laughs> You got the message. He's, because, do you know the trouble with... You know, I traveled on this trip. I was in the States um, the other week. I just came back. And I flew from... Uh, where was that? I was going to Michigan. From uh, Dallas. And there was this lady in the plane. And we were talking. And she was telling me stories. You know, she doesn't... She's a Buddhist. She doesn't believe in God. And, and you know, she doesn't believe in Jesus. And all this stuff. <laughs> so I asked her a question. I said, so where did everything come from? You know, well, it evolved, it evolved, it just evolved over millions of years. So I said, you are now saying that are, you can have something out of nothing. I asked her, I said, if I told you that this iPad, I had the iPad near the head, I said, if I told you that this iPad just evolved, would you agree with that? She said, of course not, okay. So I said, if the iPad cannot evolve, what about the Stephen Jobs that created it? Now, see, here is the point. Do you know why people preach evolution? Because once you agree that he created you, eh, eh, now that makes you accountable. It means that you are not on your own. You are not an accident. If somebody brought you here, aha, now the person should be able to tell you what to do with your life. Divine ownership. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. Do you know that this ownership is present? Notice the word is. This ownership is not a futuristic. I remember it was in Lagos. In fact, I remember the place. Somewhere along Ikorodu Road. And I was just branching off Ikorodu Road. I think it's around that place, uh, Jesu Yimbo, somebody had his, has his church, somewhere down the road there. I was about to, Ikejasa, Maryland, I was about to branch off, and I heard the Spirit of God say in my heart, that when the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and the world, and all the people that live inside, the Lord said to me, he said, if that statement is not something about the future, it is present and tangible. As much as your wristwatch that you have on your hand belongs to you, that is how the earth, this land, these houses, these human beings you are seeing here, that is how they belong to him. I 
I want you to listen. You see, many of us who are, who are I just pray that God will give you. Do you know that all the things that people wake up in the morning and they run out of their door without talking to God in the morning, all the things they are pursuing outside belong to the person they left in their house. <laughs> you, I pray you will believe what I'm telling you. Please, let's go to First Chronicles chapter 29. I want you to hear what David said. First Chronicles 29 from verse 10. Uh, please help me to put it up on the board. We are just going to read a few scriptures. Hallelujah. And, and then we, I want to show you a scripture about the power of God and then I'm done. First Chronicles 29. Are you there? Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, everybody, let's read together. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yes. Thine, O Lord, is the what? Is the greatness. See, listen, greatness belongs to God. <laughs> greatness belongs to God. And he can give it to whoever he likes. Greatness that people are looking for. It belongs to God. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power. The power. Power for what? Power to, power to do whatever he wants to do on the earth and not be called to question. Where the word of the king is, there is what? Power. And nobody can say to him, what are you doing? Do you remember yesterday, Kabiosi? Jehovah is the ultimate Kabiosi. He take it away. Who can hinder him? Who can say to him, what are you doing? You can ask that. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. What if you don't like it? What if you don't like it? You don't have to like it. I was reading the Bible and that scripture is not far away from this place. So please go to chapter 28. Then we are going to come back here. And I saw how David said that God made him king. Don't forget, sing ye praises with understanding. Pray your prayer with understanding. With a revelation that the God you are talking to is the owner of the boss in your office. He's the owner of the land you are praying about. He's the owner of Abuja. He's the owner of Nigeria. He's, this is not something in the future. The earth is 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 not the earth was or the earth one day in the future will be the Lord's no I saw in the book of Chronicles where David was telling the story it's just close to that place eh where David was telling the story of how God made him king look at it chapter 28 verse 4 you know we are in chapter 29 Backtrack a bit to chapter 28 and verse 4. David is praying here. However, the Lord God of Israel eh, chose me before all the house of my father to be the king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah. Notice all the chose, chose, chosen, chose, chose, chose. <laughs> that means he had options and then he chose this one. And the one he chose was the one that got it. Come on, did you hear what I said, people of God? The person he chose was the person that got what he wanted to give. He chose me. He chose Judah to be the ruler. And out of the house of Judah, he chose the house of my father. And among the sons of my father, eh? No, no, no. Put it in the King James. Ah, huh? you just changed it. Put, bro, put it in. Eh? Look at it. He said, and out of the house of Judah, he chose the house of my father. And among the sons of my father. He liked me. And he made me king. He liked me. <laughs> ah, ah, what you, I was doing this thing one day. I said, he liked you and he made you king. And the Spirit of God said, yes. If I like you, I can make you anything. If I like you, if I like you. Some of you, you know, if I like, if he likes you, he can make you anything. And nobody has to like it. <laughs> Come on, give him praise in the house. You understand him? You say he like me. <laughs> That's how you became king? The man said yes. He like me. In fact, I was not shortlisted when they were looking for king. <laughs> Excuse me, please. 
Samuel told, uh, what's his name? Jesse, sanctify all your children. I am coming to appoint a king. Please, follow the, follow, for you to understand the way this thing worked. Sanctify your children. Jesse sanctified everybody except David. He sanctified all the probable candidates. The shortlisted people, people like Eliab that are very big like that, and Shammah, and Aminadab. These are David's brothers. He sanctified all of them. Since they didn't give David any chance and any opportunity, what did they do? They sent him to the bush to go and look after the goats and the sheep on the day that they came to anoint king in his house. As if he was not a son in the house. They didn't like him, but Jehovah liked him. <laughs> he liked him. He liked him. It is more important for him to like you than for you to pray. And if you are praying, your prayer should be, Jehovah, please like me. <laughs> like me, Lord, I have come here. I thank you for liking me because of Jesus. I thank you for liking me. I'm grateful that you like me. <laughs> he liked me. When Samuel saw Eliab, he was going to pour something on his head. God said, stop, stop, don't pour that thing on his head. I have rejected it. You know the meaning of reject? I don't like him. <laughs> don't look at his size. I don't like him. The next, I don't like him. Next, I don't like him. Next, I don't. all of them pass. <laughs> Some will say, am I in the wrong house? God said, no, you are in the right house. The person that I like is not around. We have to wait until he comes. Give God praise in the house. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> Church, we should concentrate on, on him liking us. That is what it means to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And when the when Samuel said, nobody, he said, he said, Jesse, are these all your sons? He said, no, there is one remaining, but you know, we didn't shortlist him. Samuel said, nobody will sit down in this house until he comes. Go and bring him. Somebody ran to go and bring David. And when the person came there, David was, he was enjoying fellowship with the Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. Oh, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Oh, oh, oh whom shall... He was playing his harp. Oh, whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27 from verse 1. The Lord is my light and salvation. Oh, whom shall I fear? Then one of the goats did mad. David said, what's your problem? He went and carried one. That one peed on him. And he was singing, the Lord is my... Yeah. When his brother came, hey, stop that thing that you are singing, stop that thing that you are singing. Papa is calling you in the house. <laughs> you see, the guy was angry that he himself was not selected. You don't understand? <laughs> he said, go, go, Papa is looking for you. And when David arrived, he was smelling sheep and sheep urine. He didn't go to any different sanctification because he was already sanctified in with the bush sanctification in the presence of the eternal Jehovah, the, the word of God came and said, Arise and anoint him because this is the man, this is the person. I like this one. I like, may God like you. There are many people that go to church, God doesn't like them. They are not because they are not looking for God, they are looking for what they can collect. Dying. Go back to 1 Chronicles 29. Go back to 29 from verse 11. Dine, O oh Lord. That is the David that is talking now. So you see, the man knew that greatness belongs to God. He knew by experience. He, what he was saying is, look at me. Where will people like me have come near if not because greatness belongs to Jehovah? Dine, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory. Victory over every situation in life belongs to Jehovah. Victory is his. Now, thanks be unto God who always leads us in victory and causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thine, O Lord, is the victory and the majesty. Now, listen, look at it here now. Say, for all that is in the heaven. Ah, 
Do you know what is in the heaven? For all that is in the heaven, the universe, some scientists did some calculation. And you know what they found? These are some scientists somewhere in the US, in New England. You know what they found? They say there are 300 sextillion stars. So the question is, what is a sextillion? <laughs> because for you to understand what they are saying, you have to understand what sextillion means. Sextillion is one times 10 raised to the power 21. One followed by 21 zeros. Do you understand? Don't forget, you know, thousand is three zeros. Million is six. Billion is nine. Trillion is twelve. Sextillion is twenty-one zeros. If you are to reduce it, one sextillion is one hundred billion trillion. One, or rather, one billion trillion. Because you have billion, nine zeros, and then trillion, twelve zeros. If you add the twelve and the nine, that is twenty-one. So three hundred sextillion is three hundred billion trillion stars. That was what they calculated. And scientists tell us that every second somewhere in the universe, a brand new star is born. Now David says, for all that is in the heaven, they belong to you. And then he says, and all that is in the earth, they are dying. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art exalted as head over 90% of the people on planet earth. No, you are exalted as head over all. What do you think is going to happen to you when you are praying to him about a matter that is bothering you? And you have this revelation of who he is. You will know that he is the head of everybody. Jesus is the head of all principalities. Human and spiritual. And powers. You are exalted. Keep, let's stay with that scripture. As head over all. Next verse, verse 12. Look at it here. Look. Both riches and honor. Where do they come from, brothers and sisters now? They come from you. And you reign over all. And in your hand, there is what? There is power. And there is might. And in your hand it is to do what? To make great. Great. And to give strength unto all. I command strength to enter into you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say I decree strength into your mortal body, into your bones. It's in his hand. It's in his hand. Now you know where to look. Since he's the one that has the victory, he's the one that has the greatness, he's the one that has the power, he's the one that owns the heavens and the earth. The cattle on a thousand hills, they belong to him. When he, oh, 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 the book of Job said, when he gives quietness, who can make trouble? Job 34, 29. Job chapter 34 and verse 29. Put it up in the King James. He says, when he gives quietness, who, who, who can make trouble? Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. I said, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, there are several other scriptures that we will not be able to get into. The Bible calls him the blessed and only potentate. Who alone has immortality? Hallelujah. Dwelling in light that is unapproachable. Whom no man has seen nor can see. To whom be glory and power forever and ever. Let's go to Psalm 145. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. We, that is why we pray to him. Because he is in charge of it. He can handle it. Please, Psalm 145 verses 10 to 13. I will, uh, from verse 10, Psalm 145. Please look, up, look at it on the board to save our time. All thy works shall do what? Please help me to read it loud, everybody. Hallelujah. All thy works shall praise you. So notice, see, 
The ownership of God is over everything he created. If the devil created anything, it would be unrighteous for God to go and struggle with it, with the devil. I said, if the devil created anything, it would be unrighteousness for God to go and be struggling for something that does not belong to him. No wonder God said, woe to him that strives with his maker. He said, let the pot sheds of the earth, let the broken pots quarrel with broken pots that are at the same level with them. Not against your maker. Psalm 145, yes. From verse 11 now. Whoa, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Yes, brother, thank you. And they will bless your name. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And they shall talk of your power. Yes. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Verse 13. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Hallelujah. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. The kingdom is the Lord's. He is the governor among the nations. I want, you to, I, I want to say something to you. The idea that PDP and APC and uh, uh, SDP and other parties will continue this thing they are doing in Nigeria is a joke. There is a king that is coming. In the book of Revelation, he said, The kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. That is the kingdom that has a future. That's why God said he's going to shake the heavens and the earth. And when God begins to shake, all of this, look at America. Does that look like a kingdom that will last forever? 17.7 trillion dollars in debt. The Senate just voted to increase the amount of money they can borrow. They are not planning to pay. 17 point something trillion dollars in debt. Multiply it by 200 and something. It runs into quadrillions of naira. <laughs> can you imagine a country? That's how much debt they are owing. Huh? When God begins to shake the kingdom, that's why you don't, you don't invest your life in a kingdom that will pass away. The Bible says, wherefore we, having received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, he said, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and with godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. We have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah, somebody in this place. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion endures throughout all generations. Now, I want to show you a picture of God's power as I draw to a close. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 26. Please put it up for me on the board. That will help to save some time. Job 26, from verse 6. I want you to note this scripture as we are reading it. Because I won't have time to explain all of it. I want us to draw it to a close in the next few minutes. From verse 6, he said, Sheol or hell, hell is naked before him. And destruction has no covering. Do you know that hell is naked before God? All things are naked and open, laid bare before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Laid bare means that they are helpless in his presence. Listen, listen. I said everything is helpless in the presence of God. The Bible says Jesus is going to rule the nations with what? With what? I need to hear you. With what? A rod of iron. And he will break them to pieces. How? How? Like potter's vessel. You know pot? You know this clay pot? I want you to listen now. Listen to the summary of God's power. Jesus has a rod of iron. And he said that all the nations, they are like clay pot. Excuse me, please. How much resistance can a clay pot give? To a rod of iron. That is how helpless everything is in the presence of Jesus Christ. The sickness that people call incurable is like a clay pot in the presence of the great physician with a rod of iron. The problem that looks impossible is like a clay pot. The image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, do you remember that image? It was head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, and then the feet 
was feet of clay, a mixture of iron and clay. So this image is terrible and it is standing big, looking indestructible and invincible. But when the stone that was cut without hands, when the stone came, it was an intelligent stone. He knew where to look for. He aimed at the feet and it was feet of clay. Everything stands before Jesus Christ on feet of clay. They are waiting for the day you will smash them. His power is irresistible. It is incomprehensible. God's power is as endless as he is eternal. Hell is naked before him. Put the scripture in Job. This is the last scripture. I won't go beyond this. This passage. Destruction has no covering. You know when people are threatening you with destruction? Listen. Destruction himself that is threatening to destroy you. He himself has no covering. <laughs> you know, when you say witches and wizards are looking for you, something is looking for them. <laughs> something, something is looking for people that are looking for you. <laughs> You see, say destruction has no covering. Put the next verse. He stretches out the north over the empty place and he hangs the earth upon nothing. You see this verse of scripture? This is one of the proofs that the Bible is the word of God. Write this down, Job 26 verse 7. Here is the reason. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Job was written before the book of Genesis. It was Moses that wrote Genesis, Nabi. And you know, Moses was not there when God said, Let there be light. <laughs> and when Adam was created, he wrote it by revelation. Job lived before Moses. Theologians say that he was one of a descendant of Issachar. Now, in the oldest book in the Bible, when people are still confused and they are wondering how the earth is, do you know that back just some hundreds of years ago, people believed that planet Earth was flat? And it was standing on the back of some big elephants. Resting on top of some big snake. And they are the ones that are carrying planet Earth up like that. But in the oldest book of the Bible, he said that God stretches the north over the empty place. And he hangs planet Earth on nothing. That is an accurate scientific statement. It's an accurate... So how did somebody know thousands of years ago that planet Earth was hanging on nothing? When did scientists find it out? It's, it's some, some years ago. When they now went out to space and they took a picture and they found that planet Earth is hanging on nothing. But the Bible, the oldest book in the Bible, written thousands of years ago by the person that created planet Earth has already made it clear. Somebody give him praise in the house here. Give him praise. Give him praise. Now listen to me now. If he can hang planet Earth with 7.4 billion people on nothing, he can sustain you on nothing. <laughs> you know, you know, money doesn't threaten me. Oh. Money doesn't threaten me. And I pray that money will not decide when, when you will be happy. <laughs> so, some people, money decides when they laugh. One day God asked me a question. The Bible says they were in the wilderness, you remember? And there was no food to eat. And Jesus said, give them something to eat. He said, where shall we buy bread? Where shall we buy bread? Somebody pressed calculator. He said, in fact, 200 denarii worth of bread will not be sufficient for these people to get a bite. Jesus said, what do you have? How many loaves do you have? Make them sit down. The Spirit of God asked me a question. Did they eat bread that day? He said, yes. Question, did they buy bread? <laughs> then God said to me, said, you don't have to buy it to have it. You know, many of you, when you are praying for your need, you are not praying for what you need. You are praying for money to buy what you need. You are, you are breaking the Bible. Pray for what you need and let God decide how to provide it. Whether he will send you the car or he's going to send you the money to buy the car. When you begin to operate like this, money will not intimidate you. 
Because you know that if he can hang the earth on nothing, he can sustain your life on nothing. I said he can sustain your life on nothing. He can, I mean, planet earth with all the billions of people, he's hanging it on nothing. What about one human being? Give me a few more minutes. Let me draw to a close. Put the next scripture. Verse 8 now. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds and the cloud is not rent under them. Your life will not scatter because he's holding you together. He's holding you together. He binds the waters and the thing doesn't tear. <laughs> Sometimes he looks as if you are going to burst. One seems to say, I am like a bottle in the smoke. I am like a bottle in the smoke, ready to explode. But his hand is holding me together because in him all things hold together. All things consist. Next verse. He binds up the waters in his thick clouds. The cloud is not rent under them. Go ahead. He holds back the face of his throne. He spreads a cloud upon it. He has compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble and they are astonished at his reproof. Next verse. He divides the sea with his power. This scripture was written before it happened. Remember, Job is older than the book of Exodus. So Job already stated that God divides the sea with his power before God did it for the children of Israel. It was already in the book. And by his understanding, he does what? He smites through the proud. Verse 13. Verse 13. By his spirit, he has garnished the heavens. The one that garnished the heavens by his spirit will garnish your life. He will garnish, he will decorate your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And his hand has pierced the crooked servant. Verse 14, that's the last verse. Lo, these, all of these things that you have been hearing, stay with me, I am done now. This is the last verse. All of these things that you are hearing about God's power, they are what? They are parts of his ways. But how little a portion is head of him. But the thunder of his power. Who can understand? He said, dividing the sea. Piercing the serpent. Hanging planet earth on nothing. They are just parts of what he does. Put it up in the Amplified Translation. We are going to read. If you have it in the Living Bible or Message Translation, get it ready. We are going to hear from you. Put up the Amplified. Yet, all of these things are but a small part of his doings. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. All of these things, hanging planet earth on nothing, dividing the sea, binding something, keeping it from scattering, they are just small parts of his doings. They are the outskirts of his ways. The mere fringes of his force. If the fringes of his force can keep planet Earth hanging on nothing, what will the center of his power do? Hanging planet Earth on nothing, he said it is the faintest whisper of his voice. So who can contemplate? Who can imagine? Who can understand the thunder of his full magnificent power? Living by... I want the Living Bible. I want to stop. I will read it from here. Aha. No, okay, good, good, good. This is it. Please, this is New Living Translation. This we do. Everybody, let's read this together. I want to go. These are just the beginning of, of all he does. Merely a whisper of his power. Who then can comprehend the thunder? Brothers and sisters, if a whisper of his power hangs planet Earth on nothing, who can understand the thunder of his power? I want to read you the Living Bible. That is New Living Translation. There is a way the Old Living Bible put it that amazed me when I saw it. Yes, I have it here. Did you have it, brother? You don't have it. Let me find it here and, and read. This is Job 26 and verse 14. Living Bible said, These are some of the minor things that he does. Merely a whisper of his power. Who then can understand 
the thunder of his power. That hanging planet earth on nothing is one of the minor things that God does. So what are the major things? Brothers and sisters, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. There is nothing over his power that, there is nothing that his power does not extend over. Philippians chapter 3 speaks of the power whereby he is able to subject all things under himself. There is nothing we cannot pray about because thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. There is no request that is too big. There is nothing that is too complex. There is nothing that is too big that he cannot handle. No! Hanging planet at on nothing is one of the minor things that he does. What about giving somebody a baby on planet Earth? Does that qualify as one of the minor things? It is sub-minor. Dividing the Red Sea is one of the minor things that... Excuse me, do you know that all of these 300 sextillion stars that we are talking about, all of them are also hanging on nothing. He upholds all of them by the word of his power. Somebody give him praise in the house. Rise up on your feet and begin to worship him. Let's praise him. Let's give him praise. Let's say, thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Forever and ever. I want you to lift up your voice and worship him tonight. Just bless him. I want you to see him as he is. I want you to see his greatness. Behold his majesty. See the greatness of his power, of his person, of his excellency. What a da 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 te te katara. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the majesty. Thine is the victory. Thine is the greatness. Thine is the supernatural enlargement. Thine, thine, oh Lord. Too loud. It belongs to him. Let's pray, let's pray, let's worship him. Stir up faith inside your spirit. Come on. Stir up faith. The bigger God gets in your eyes, the tinier your mountains will become. The bigger God gets in your eyes, the tinier your mountains will become. Wotokani bambosa teje kumbi kabama hana taika. Etelani te kriposti palabarate. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the endless power. Well, Teta Bahate Kandrishe Karia. Ah, Lord God, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Nothing is too difficult for you. Great in counsel, mighty indeed. We worship you tonight. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of heaven and earth. With you all things are possible. Hallelujah. We praise you tonight. Let faith rise in your spirit. When you pray, you pray with this understanding. Next time you are praying about the nations of the earth, you pray with this understanding. When you are praying for revival, for salvation, for healing, of what they call incurable, ah, you don't call it what they call it. Because of Emmanuel. We don't say incurable when they say incurable. Because of Emmanuel. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. With him nothing shall be impossible. And he's here tonight. This is why we pray to him. Thine is the kingdom. It's because you are the governor among the nations. The power belongs to you. The earth and everything inside, they belong to you. There is nothing you cannot handle. There is nothing bigger than you. We praise you, Father, for the exceeding greatness of your power. The only wise God. Blessed be God of... of blessed be the most high God. Possessor of heaven and earth. Thine is the greatness. 
Thine is the power. Thine is the wisdom. You are the source of it all. You hold the whole world in your hands. We praise you. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Ask God to open your eyes. Say, Father, take away the veil. I want to see you. I want to see you as you are. High and lifted up. Far above all. With absolute authority. Irresistible in your power. Kinitinge shipota, pota, pota. Kite palakari santeta. Oh, bara, bara, bara. Hallelujah! 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 All the kings of the earth, they shall come and bow down, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Our God is an awesome God. With Him all things are possible. Now you can see why. You can see why now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, what is it that you are facing that looks impossible in your eyes? <laughs> Obviously, if he hangs the earth on nothing and he divides the Red Sea and it is one of the minor things that he does, how do you categorize your problem? How do you categorize what you are facing? So, faith is rising up in your spirit right now. As you behold him in his glory. You can see that as it's getting bigger in your eyes, the problem is getting smaller. The problem is getting smaller. If you want to stand for something tonight, there's something you are believing God for. And in the light of his majesty and his limitless power, you can see that your problem is, is, is sub-minor. Just step forward here. I want to join my faith with you as we pray together and draw to a close. Blessed be God forevermore. You will have a testimony. Only believe. Just believe. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you, so shall you be established. And believe this word that I have spoken in his name. And you will prosper. You will have a testimony. Just lift up your voice and begin to receive. Don't wait for me. Don't wait for me. Talk to him. Say, Father, ah, you hang the head on nothing. It's one of the minor things that you do. So what about this problem? Attend to it with your power in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. You can stand to pray. However you want to pray, you stay to pray. Just, just receive it. Take it. Say, Father, my problem, excuse me, please. Is there something that you are facing that is as impossible as hanging planet's head on nothing? Thank you, Father. Pray for one more minute. Pray for one more. Just receive the thing. Just take it. Ah, say, Father, no, this one is small in your sight. Magnify him and minimize the problem. Magnify him and minimize the problem. Receive healing for your body. If they say it's incurable, they say, don't call it what they call it. Every so-called incurable sickness here tonight, diabetes, hypertension, cancers, swellings, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out of the body in the name of Jesus. HIV AIDS, die. Get out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. Every so-called incurable sickness, because of Emmanuel, because of Emmanuel, you are curable. Himself took our infirmities. He carried our sicknesses. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Every impossible situation facing you tonight, receive the answer in the name of Jesus. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. It is in his hand. In your hand, it is to make great and to give strength to all. Receive strength in your finances. Receive financial strength, physical strength, emotional strength. Yet of Paco Proste Pange Sakanataya. Yes, you pala marana tasaya. Receive babies, receive children in the name of Jesus. 
And when we pray for the nations of the earth, we know that they are in his hands. Saudi Arabia is in his hands. America, Asia, they are all in his hands. He is the governor among the nations. So we can ask him for the nations. We, are, we can ask him for revival. We can ask him for an outpouring of his spirit. We can ask that his kingdom will come and his will will be done in the nations of the earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's okay now. Please stand on your feet and lift up your hands. I want to agree with you in prayer. Just stand on your feet, lift up your hands to him. In the name of Jesus. As I pray, I want you to agree with me by saying amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Eternal Father, I have told my brothers and my sisters that our case is different because of Emmanuel. I have shown them from your word that hanging planet Earth on nothing is one of the minor things that you do. Because the whole universe, you are hanging the whole universe on nothing. Even the sun around which planet Earth revolves, you are hanging it on nothing. And it is one million times the size of planet Earth. You are hanging it on nothing. I have told them that even dividing the Red Sea, it was already in the book before it happened. It was not an emergency arrangement. And it is classified as one of the whispers of your power. Now tonight, Father, whatever matter has been tabled before you here tonight, I ask that you will introduce not even the thunder of your power, the finger of God. Introduce the finger of God in their situation. And let that problem dissolve. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed in your body in the name of Jesus. Father, that thing that they say is impossible, it is not impossible in your eyes. Receive your answer in the name of Jesus Christ. That thing that looks as if it is going to scatter, it will not scatter. Because you can bind it, you can hold it together. The person that needs sustenance, if you can uphold planet Earth or nothing, you can sustain that sister's life. You can sustain this brother's life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That thing that they told you was incurable. If it is incurable in the sight of human beings, will it also be incurable with Emmanuel? Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not die. You shall live and you shall declare the works of Almighty God. Father, tonight, I want to ask that upon everyone here tonight, a fresh revelation of who God is will dawn upon our hearts. And as we pray, we will pray with this understanding. We will grow in this revelation until there is a certainty in our hearts that your power can handle whatever we pray about. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now do exceeding abundantly above everything that we have asked, everything that we have imagined, everything that we have requested. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And to you be all of the praise and all of the glory forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name we are prayed. And the people of God shouted, Amen. Come on, somebody give him praise in the house.